Hello and welcome to your session about inventory control. In this lesson I'm going to show you how to use purchase orders. I show you how to create purchase orders using various options, how to place the purchase order, how to amend it and the different options when you receive your order. Purchase orders are a way to automate the way you order your stock. In part one of the lessons on how to create new standard items, I have explained the value and importance of the fields for the restock level and the reorder points. These fields are useful for purchase orders but not essential. To give you first a little overview, I'm going to show you the process of how to create purchase orders. To demonstrate you the, the way purchase orders are used, I'm going to show you the process. First action is you create the purchase order. Your second step is to amend the item list with quantities, prices and costs. Third step is you place the order. Step 4 is then you receive the order. And step 5 you commit the item quantities which actually changes your stock. Now let's have a look on how to do it. To create a purchase order go to the inventory menu and click on purchase orders. This window is showing you all the open purchase orders as you see here in the filter but you can choose to see either all, that includes also the closed ones, or the partially received ones. As well have here a date range which you can delete as well as you can amend the date to do a different time frame. Click on new to create a new purchase order. In the generation selection there are four different ways and by default option 3 to use the reorder information is selected. In the group option you can choose to order items from a particular department or category or supplier or other filter information. For example I use here for my purchase order every item in a particular category and I'm choosing the categories for those three and then in the supplier section you can choose to only order items from the primary supplier or eventually if you have more than one supplier for the same item to choose the cheapest supplier. I'm just leaving the option for primary supplier. It has to be said that if you choose here in the group selection a particular supplier you must opt for the third one here otherwise it will still take the primary supplier. I click on OK and the purchase order with the number 16 has been created. Now looking at my purchase order here I double click to open my purchase order and to see all the details. You see what is the supplier, you see the tax rate, exchange rate as you might have watched the lesson about foreign currencies. If you have a supplier that comes from a different country with a different currency you would see the exchange rate in here. The other tab that is more important is the content tab here where you see all the items on the list. That's the quantity on hand, that's the quantity committed and by default quantity ordered is one. But if you want you can change those information as well as the supplier costs. The price here for that item is 129 euros so let's say the cost would be 89.50. Tax rate for this supplier is 23% and that will automatically calculate the tax for this ordered quantity of items. You see more details down below. If you want you can add more items and choose from the list by just simply double clicking and then you see the items on the list again. You can amend the quantities for those items as well as the prices. I'm going to speed this up a little. Okay, once you've amended all those informations in the white columns, you can click OK and leave it for the moment, but that means that it has not yet been placed this order. To place the order, you click back on the header tab and you choose the option that this order has been placed. And you click OK and now your order has been placed. After you have placed the order, you can export the document which is an option for you so you could directly send the purchase order to your supplier. Therefore you have to open your purchase order. You have to click on the header tab on the bottom for export document. You can either choose to directly send it as an email, therefore you must have installed Outlook. You can also use application where you can choose either to have an XML or a HTML file, which is a file that can be read by any browser. You can use the file option, which basically gives you the same options. They do look slightly different. You can export it into an Excel document as well as you could do it into a Word document. And the last option would be to do it for internet browser, which is basically the same like an HTML file. I did that for you already. So I'm going to show you how this looks like. I'm just clicking OK here. Save my document. As you see, I've done that before. 
just overwrite it and that's the way it looks like. That's when you choose the internet browser. Alternatively, this is how it looks like if you use application and HTML files, just a bit more colorful, but basically the same information. If you have chosen the Excel file, that's how it looks here. And if you have chosen Word document, that's how it looks in the Word document. As you remember, the fourth step of our process is that we receive the order. To receive the order, you have to choose the order and you have to click on receive. Don't click double to open the order. That would basically just change the information. You have to click on receive. You see, there's a little difference. First of all, we go into the contents tab and you see your list and the list is in green. Your quantity ordered, your quantity retrieved to date and your quantity received for this order right now. You can enter the amounts as you have received them or if you want, if you know exactly that the amount that you have received is what you have ordered, you can just say receive all and automatically it fills out all the details as it has been placed. As you see, my information are now in blue, which basically is the indicator that you have received as you have ordered. If, and I would look at that with you later, the quantity is less than what you have ordered, the line will be displayed in red. And you will have several options for one would be to close the order as it is, and an alternative would be to close the order and automatically generate a new order with the amounts that are still due to be delivered, or you can leave the purchase order as partially received. If you're sure that you've entered all the information with the costs and the price as well as the quantity received, you have to click on commit, which is the last step in our process. Again, please be informed that this will actually change your inventory. Clicking on commit and confirming this operation with yes. Now the purchase order became grayed out. You cannot change any information on this anymore. And purchase order number 16 is out of my list because it's not longer open, it's a closed one. I want to show you, as you said, how to handle a purchase order when you do not receive the full stock. For example, here with my supplier from Switzerland, whereby you see the exchange rate, which is in the supplier's currency, Swiss franc, uh, but if you like, you can also display that in your local currency. That's just as a side note. Now, looking at the content, this is my quantity ordered and I have to click on receive to amend my information. Let's just suppose I'm having not received all items. As I said earlier, you see those items will be displayed in red. We keep on following the process and we click on commit. Confirm that this will modify the quantities in your database. And now this is the options that you can choose from. You either close this purchase order, you ignore the fact that you still have items to be delivered. You can close this purchase order and generate a new one for the remaining items. Or you can choose the option to make it partially received. We know what happens if we choose option number one. Now I show you what happens if we choose option number two. This will go as it is closed. And we have number 17, a new one with the two remaining items. Now looking at those purchase order that have been received partially, the quantity ordered, the quantity retrieved to date, where the difference between the figures are. So here, for example, has only been delivered one instead of two and two instead of seven. So you can ignore those blue lines and just take care of those red lines. You can say receive all, which means it gives you the remaining quantities and then you click on commit. That will finalize the process. Thanks for watching and I hopefully see you in our lesson about transfers in and manually stock take. Your PSS team.